Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's a Monday morning as we enter into November, which is Men's Health Awareness Month worldwide. Now, for generations, men have fed the idea that to be a real man, one has to be strong and unshakable. Now, no surprise then that men and young boys today are at great risk of mental, physical, and emotional infirmity that more than their female counterparts. And the, the purpose then of Men's Health Month is to heighten the awareness on the preventable physical and mental health problems that occur. And we talk to, we are talking men's health and all that it entails with our panel consisting of motivational coach, Paolo Pimentel Mendez, Ryan Father Paul from Lifeline, as well as world champion adventurer, Chris Burtis. Gentlemen, a very good morning. Happy Monday to you all. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that you, you are entering this month in full health, right? Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fantastic. Ryan, let me start off with you first um, and, and talk about South African uh, women who tend to take care of their, their health a lot better than, than us as, as men, right? So what, what have you found is the reason why this occurs? Yeah, I mean, typically one of the main reasons for, you know, um, women being more likely to take better care of their health um, is probably due to uh, traditional masculine norms. Uh, men are more likely to engage in more health impeding uh, behaviors and or risky behaviors. Mm -hmm. And also they're less likely because, you know, like you said, we are expected to be tough and mm. you know, not show vulnerability. We are less likely to seek out medical help um, or um, even professional help for mental issues, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris, I mean, speaking about being mentally tough and having to go through it, I mean, you, you've had to go through the very most when you think about some of your achievements, I would assume, um, as one of the first people, you're the first person to ever paddle on a stand-up, an SUP, right? right? Across almost 7,000 kilometers of right. ocean. Correct. I mean, that just blows my mind even saying it. Talk about spills and thrills. <laughs> but what are, what are some of the, the issues or the challenges that you had to go through in order to achieve some of the accolades that you have? Well, I think it's, you know, the, there's a lot to be said about mental toughness and grit and resilience. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes from putting yourself in those kind of uncomfortable spaces continuously. But it doesn't mean that, you know, I don't have emotions like everyone else. I might seem like I'm tough on the outside. Like, I think a lot of men do you put on Do, that facade, yeah. but we all have emotions, we all have low points, and it's how to navigate your way through that. And I think, you know, we all have our own oceans to cross and our own journeys in ourselves. And I think, you know, the facade that we have on the outside doesn't mean we're not soft and, and have um, challenges on the inside like everyone. Yeah. I think it's, it's always important for people to see that everyone's the same, you know? Everyone mm -hmm. has the same issues, and behind the mask, everybody has the same problems. They're just a different version of it. Yeah. And Paula, I mean, for you, you are originally from <coughs> Brazil, but you've called South Africa home for quite some time now. What have you found to be some of the main issues concerning men's health in South Africa? I think very similar to, to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in general. I grew up in Rio, and as a, as a culture, there's a, there's a culture of health and taking care of yourself. But it, it's interesting hearing to both Ryan and Chris, it's, it's like the two extremes that I see the men face both there and here is that you have the normal scenario where the man is focused on work and, and providing and, and, and there's a cultural performance where you, you are valued and you are worth your less achievement. Hmm. And, and you're always chasing that next thing that's gonna make you worth it again or stay in that worthy status as a husband, as a man, as a professional. And then you get the other extreme of guys like, like Chris that are the, the warriors of the older days, right? And yes, the emotions, we all face the same challenges in Brazil, in South Africa, and whether you are a warrior, an adventurer, an athlete, or you are a normal day-to-day -day citizen, but the challenge is that we tend to look at the warrior and then think they are stronger, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? We are all the same. And, and we are all the same. I, be, I think that the challenge mostly is the fact that men are, are only now learning to open up, mm -hmm. only now learning to have the conversations where the focus being placed on women's health was so uh, massive in the last couple of years because obviously we want to make without the women we wouldn't be here right of course, yes. without our moms without our girls without our women 
girls, married women, okay? Mm -hmm. There we and go, there we go. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? yes. But the point being that only now men are learning to open it up and not just uh, sport talk, not just uh, the car, women, booze, politics. Mm -hmm. Now we're learning to level up. I was blown away the other day when my 14-year-old son, just my, uh, 13, just turned 14 last week, and he sat with me and he said, Daddy, I said, what do you want? I, I was busy with work, I'm like, what do you want? Can you teach me how to be more mature? Wow. And I was like, whoa. Wow. That's a deeper question. Yeah, and we'll address deeper questions. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think you encapsulated the topic of the day for me personally, um, just right in your, in your opening sentence where you said we live in this culture of performance. And we live in this culture of performance where all the world is the audience. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at each individual man's achievements and their performance on the stage to evaluate their value in society. And we'll continue our chat regarding mental health or men's health in general uh, with our panel of experts very shortly. Right now, let's take care of the physical side of things. It's my feel good birthday show. Yes, it is indeed. It's a Monday morning on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Thanks so much for starting the brand new week off with us. Now, uh, as we talk mental and men's health more specifically, it's not just about growing a moustache for November. It's also about raising much needed awareness for the health issues facing men, specifically prostate and testicular cancer, mental health and suicide prevention as well. And we continue our discussion on Men's Health Month with our panel consisting of motivational coach uh, Paolo Pimentel Mendez, Ryan van der Poel from Lifeline, as well as world champion adventurer Chris Burtish. Now, earlier on, we, discuss, we discussed the underlying issues that contribute to the decline in the well-being among men. And we now delve a little bit deeper into the root causes and the knock-on effects of all of this. So, gentlemen, thank you very much once again for entertaining this discussion. Chris, I want to start off with you first. Uh, there's this notion that men in, engage in riskier behavior, as you, I'm sure, are very used to, having detailed a little bit of what you've done earlier on. But where do you think this ideology uh, comes from, and how do you particularly prepare yourself to engage in this riskier behavior, if you will? Um, I think a lot of people think that, like, uh, the adventures that I do are super risky and challenging, but I think, you know, if you put in the <coughs> preparation mm -hmm. so you can reduce the risk, then you can proceed with conf confidence and have the kind of outcomes that you look mm -hmm. for. And, I think, you know, a lot of, uh, I think it's probably more dangerous uh, cycling on our roads than doing the stuff that I do. This is true, <laughs> so, this is true. So yeah, you know, I think really mentally preparing is really an important part of being successful at anything in life. And yeah. uh, whether that be in business life or sport. And it's really about um, working through all the different scenarios so you are prepared and in a positive proactive state rather than a, panicked reactive state when situations arise mm -hmm. that you're better prepared to be able to handle it. And also making sure that you can identify with your own emotions. And, um, you know, a lot of people think that vulnerability is weakness. Mm. I personally believe that when you know yourself very well, that vulnerability is strength. Yeah. And being able to show your emotions and being able to identify with that and show that is a sign of strength. And I think a lot of men need, need to um, come into their own by realizing that that by being um, confident with being vulnerable mm. and connecting and talking about the issues that you have um, is a sign of strength and yeah. men need to talk more and I think that's the one area that that I think we we all agree on Go, men don't talk and when we talk we connect and when we connect we we become better versions of ourselves and a problem shared is a problem halved yeah and all too often uh, that conversation is never had in time uh, when mental health issues really creep in, and we talk about statistics that are alarming in the sense, Ryan, that yeah. um, you know, 37 out of every 100,000 men in South Africa commit suicide as opposed to 10 women in that same kind of statistical framework. So what do you think the state of mental health among men is in South Africa, if you could frame that? Yeah, I mean, that stat <clears throat> in itself is actually quite a, a sad stat. It just shows that men are struggling with their mental health, but they're not talking about it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, if they're not talking about it, they're resorting to um, risky behaviours such as, you know, alcohol or drugs or, or even, um, like you said, committing suicide because mm -hmm. they realise or they feel that there's no other avenue because we don't talk about it, we don't share our feelings. Um, like we've mentioned over and over, to be a man, it's 
to mean you don't cry, you know, you don't show vulnerability. So how can I talk about it without being vulnerable? Mm. Um, and, and that's what leads to that last resort of suicide instead of, you know, opening up to our friends, um, family, or even to a professional. Yeah. And Paolo, I mean, we're trying to change things, right? So breaking the cycle of teaching our young boys to be vulnerable and to talk. Um, it's certainly something that I'm very kind of actively uh, trying to to get into my son's head, you know, every time we have a little bit of a confrontation and there's a bit of a disciplinary issue <clears throat> and he maybe is upset, I have to allow him to cry and then talk him through it slowly but surely. You have teenage boys. How do you keep them on track? Uh, I love that you mentioned that example about the conversation with your son. Um, I, I have experienced lately that very son that asked me about how to become more mature. At 14. At 14, because th th this is the kind of conversations we've been having where it, it, it goes back to emotional strength, emotional maturity. So I broke down to him and say, maturity is not you knowing more. It's not knowing how to answer things because you have more knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's emotional strength. And it comes down from developing resilience comes down from overcoming problems. The only way you're gonna get strong, and I use the example of exercising. I, I'm 53 now. A year ago, I had a blood clot in my leg that I had to go through surgery for it. And the short and simple version of it is that I was spending 10 hours a day working on the computer, preparing uh, meetings and preparing trainings and workshops, and I neglected my health. Hmm. So by staying active and, and going to the gym and exercising, yes, my body's sore after the sessions, but I become stronger. I become more resilient physically. Mm. In that same way, I explain to him the process mind-wise. So uh, he, he turns to me yesterday, we were having a conversation and he said something and I just stared at him, like, but, but not staring, I just looked at him like... In wonderment. How? You know, <laughs> why, why? And he looks at me like, why you look so angry? I said, I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at where is that that we are missing in this communication here? Mm. So working with the two boys, the, the older one is very different. He's a lot more, you know, hands-on, wants to help in everything, loves talking to everybody. But the point was, I, I speak to them about having vision, mm -hmm. relationship, and then knowing your why. And that's what center us as men, whether you are a child or a grown up. Again, no, no it's not about whether you are the warrior or the quiet person. We both need the same thing. We all need the same thing. You gotta know your why. Mm -hmm. Your purpose is unique. You're here for a reason. Mm -hmm. You're not an accident. Mm -hmm. Then you gotta have relationships that are gonna foster that emotional maturity. Yeah. Then you gotta have a vision to where you're going and that's gonna guide you through the challenges. Yeah, I love that. And we're gonna continue our conversation very shortly regarding <clears throat> men's health during this next month coming up, especially with regards to Chris, his brand new book, All In, which he's holding quite <laughs> safely right there on his lap. But uh, do of course contribute to our conversation on social media as well. We'd love to hear from you uh, with regards to how you are tackling the issues that surround men's health. It's my feel good we're back again. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show, Expresso on S3, and we're back to discussing men's health with our panel consisting of motivational coach Paolo Pimentel Mendez, Ryan Father Paul from Lifeline, as well as world champion adventurer Chris Vertish. And of course, we are encouraging you at home to join in on the discussion by sharing your thoughts and experiences with a voice note on WhatsApp on 063 408 8863. Shane sent one to us. Let's have a quick listen. Good morning, Shane. I personally think that men don't work on their mental health. They keep it to themselves because they want to be strong and act like real men. But in, internally, men are struggling with mental health issues, and you guys were correct. That's what leads to depression and, and a whole lot of other stuff, and then eventually probably taking your own life. Mm, yeah, all too often we've seen that as the, the end result of the culmination of issues over time. Um, so, Chris, we were going to be talking about your book, All In. Firstly, love the title. It inspires the mind. Uh, tell me about how you are inspiring courage and confidence, as well, as well as the work that you're doing through the Chris Burtish Foundation. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, obviously, the book is about the, the journey on the transatlantic. And I think, um, you know, I think what I've learned through this journey is that 
everybody has their own struggles and challenges, and it's how we we navigate our way through those those challenges, both physically, mentally, and emotionally. And it's really can I have a look at the book? Yeah, yeah, for sure. a second. Firstly, I mean, look at the, worry, look at the can, cover, you'll, gents. You can get, you'll get, you'll get uh, feel inspired for the month of November. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, oh, very, oh my word. Very rugged. <laughs> very rugged. <laughs> the pirate, the pirate within. <laughs> Sorry, this I'll, I'll is, the, this is the, 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 the clean shaven pirate this morning. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I, I think people don't realize that even people that, that come across really strong and come across like they, they, they don't feel fear, they don't feel emotion, they don't get weak. Um, mm. We all have those challenges, we all have, have those emotions, and it's how we move through them and how we right. identify them. I think that that's important. And I think as, as Paolo mentioned earlier, you know, I'm very, I'm very purpose driven. I have a very powerful why. Mm. Um, and that why helps, na helps me navigate my way through any challenges, change and turbulent times. Yeah. I think it's very important to identify with that why to be able to help you use that as a North Star, to be able to be your compass, to be able to help you get through difficult times and get you back into a more positive state when you're going through really difficult, dark times. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the positive steps that one can begin to take in order to address uh, more proactively your health uh, in general, but you said you have a very powerful why. How did you discover your why? Um, that's a great question, and I think everybody, everybody discovers it in different ways. Some people never discover it. I'm being very fortunate that, um, and it takes a lot of courage, I think, to to identify with what it is mm -hmm. and then follow that path because often the path that that you need to take to do that is not the easy choice. And yeah. I always say in life, in life when you're faced with cert certain different challenges and change, don't take the easy choice because the easy choice is often not the right choice. And the path less traveled is mm. the one that might be bumpy along the way, but it's the one that will lead you to your true and greater self. Mm. And I've really learned that on my journey. And I, I worked in, in corporate for quite a while and I didn't enjoy the person that I was becoming. I didn't feel like I was the best version of myself. And I felt like I, I got to a place where I, had, I was making the money, I had all, everything that most people would define as success, but I didn't like who I was. Hmm. And I didn't feel like I was contributing to the world in the best way possible and using my tools that I had as my gifts to be able to give back, help others, lift other people up wow. and inspire positive change. And once I made that decision, I said to myself, it didn't matter how, how like if I didn't make any money, um, as, like as long, I, as long as I was living my purpose mm -hmm. and living my best self yeah. and using my gifts to be able to help give back and inspire the people, that for me was success. My goodness, and, wow. And, and, and it's been a very difficult road, being able to become a motiv motivational speaker and inspire people through the journeys. It's been a very difficult, hard road. But is, that road has been so inspiring for me mm -hmm. because the books that I do and the adventures that I, that, that I achieve um, help and inspire other people to get through challenges and change mm -hmm. and inspire people to believe in themselves and what's possible. And that for me is my purpose and mm -hmm. it makes me realize that I'm on the right path. Yeah, all of this just screams out to me, the knowledge of self, spending time with yourself, becoming comfortable with yourself such that you can identify those moments when I don't like the person I'm becoming because you're consciously and subconsciously aware of it. Uh, how can uh, men out there seek the help of Lifeline? Um, yeah, we have multiple platforms. We have the typical landline um, that you can call, and then we also have WhatsApp. We have WhatsApp counselling. Uh, you can phone by WhatsApp or text counselling. Okay. COVID made that absolutely necessary where um, we needed to find other avenues, and yeah. that's text. Yeah. And even face-to-face -face and via Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Gents, thank you very much. I, I really wish we had, we could have this discussion every single day and I'm hoping that throughout the month of November you will be continuing this discussion on your own social platforms and engaging with men out there and helping them to discover their why, to open up and to be a bit more vulnerable and showing strength in that way. Much appreciated. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. So.